My name is Randy Howell, and you're listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Welcome to the Faith and Fishing Podcast, where every episode I'll bring you an interview with a member of the fishing community, and they'll be sharing their faith stories and fishing memories with you. I'm your host, Cam Steele. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. Hey, and I'm Robert. And uh, yeah, so we've got we've got an awesome episode for you this week. Um, we're still uh, running with the old intro. I just haven't gotten gotten around to getting that getting that changed to to include Robert. But uh, be on the lookout for that soon. Um, I don't have a ton in terms of housekeeping uh, this week, uh, but I did want to go ahead and remind everyone uh, if you are enjoying the podcast. Uh, go ahead and leave us a rating and a review, um, especially if you're listening uh, through Apple Podcasts. Those ratings and reviews, um, that's how, that's kind of like the algorithm that Apple uses to um, to uh, to help you find us if, or help new listeners find us. So if you're listening and you enjoy it, um, go ahead and leave us a rating and a review. Um and I am, I'm very uh, anti Apple, so I'm not going to say go to Apple to leave us a, a review. But if you're already listening on Apple, go ahead and leave us a review. Uh, Robert, man, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing pretty good. I, I can't complain. So, listen to a bunch of podcasts today. Cut some grass. Uh, went out to my son's school. Had to meet the teacher night. So. Uh, it's a good way to good way to wrap up the night tonight with a little podcast and a, and a great guest tonight. So I'm looking right, forward to it. Man. Did you have some crazy storms come through this afternoon? Oh yeah, I got soaking wet working today. So it, it thunder, lightning poured down, and you know it would start for a while and stop for a while, but still managed to get a few things done. Crazy wind, people's people's like uh, patio umbrellas flying across the road. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead. If you don't have any other housekeeping stuff, let's go ahead um, have a couple sponsor uh, sponsor words, and then let's get our guest introduced. Sounds good. Atollus, based out of Charleston, South Carolina, is an eyewear accessory and gear company focused on enhancing your time on the water. Their floating sunglass retainers are the most technically advanced around. Over five years of engineering, testing, and exhaustive feedback from paddlers, anglers, and watermen have resulted in a patented design in a class of its own. They're incredibly light and comfortable, built for durability, sport a sleek, minimal design, float virtually all brands and models of sunglasses, and they're back for life. So if you break them, Atollus will replace them, no questions asked. Whether you're fishing, kayaking, or boating, Atollus will save your shades from the dream. Head on over to A-T-O-L-L-A-S dot C-O to check out their gear and use promo code FAITHINFISH15, that's FAITH, the letter N, FISH, the number one, five, at checkout to save 15% on your order. With 30 years of experience of handcrafting lures under his belt, Mr. B of Mr. B Lure Company is making high quality spinner baits, buzz baits, jigs, underspins, swim blades, and more right here in the U.S. All of his skirts are hand tied, and all of his baits feature a baked on powder paint, all metal components, and only owner and gamagatsu hooks. All of his baits come in a variety of colors, and if you purchase a bait in the battle shad color, 30% of the proceeds go to the Wounded Warrior Project. To see the quality for yourself, go to MrBLureCompany.com, that's MRBLureCompany.com, to place your order and use promo code FAITH, the letter N, FISH, the letter N, P-O-D, 1X10 at checkout to save 10% on your first order. All right, before we, before we go on, I did want to mention one thing about Atollis. Um, so I've been, uh, preaching their, uh, sunglass retainers. They are, uh, in talks with a, uh, manufacturer to try and get those back in stock. 
Uh, they lost their manufacturer about a year ago. And that is why if you go on their website, they're all out of stock. But I will say if you are a fly fisherman um, and you are looking for a way to carry your flies to and from the water, they have a fly caddy that is uh, it clips onto your hook or onto your uh, visor in your truck um, that uh, you can get your your stuff to and from there. And they have packages for freshwater and saltwater that they come with uh, some flies from some of their local local fly tires. So I uh, just wanted to, to throw that out there for y'all. But um, Robert, man, you excited about this guest? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've been uh, hearing about this guy. I've been uh, watching some of his trails. And, uh, you know, he's uh, – I, I went back and listened to some podcasts that he had been guest on, just kind of do a little, little, little homework. Uh, so this guy's been around the kayak fishing game for a long time, and I'm looking forward to, to getting to hear more about his story. Absolutely. Well, let's get Steve Owens in here. Uh, Steve-O, man, welcome to the show. Oh, no. <laughs> we lost audio again. We've been battling some, some technical difficulties, um, and and we thought we had them ironed out. And that that magical record button is is uh, magical in not such a great way sometimes. But no, um, no, we cannot hear you, buddy. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, while uh, while Steve is. Uh, is getting that worked out. I did want to say, I, I want to reiterate what Robert said. You know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts, not yet, buddy. Um, and every time I see Steve O's name, uh, on the, on the guest list for a podcast I listen to, I know it's going to be a good one. Um, but yeah, we are, um, <clears throat> Yeah, so, you know, I I always hear about, you know, some trails people are talking about, they're they're great trails, some trails people are talking about that this needs to be done different. Uh, Just from everything that I've heard uh, about Steve is is when this guy's involved with the trail, uh, things are done the right way. And, uh, you know, I know he's helped grow that uh, uh, TVKA. Uh, trail into into one of the biggest grassroots trails. Um, so hopefully we'll get this audio worked out. So if you are um, if you're watching on YouTube, um, uh, this is going to be a really interesting, uh, really interesting video because you get to see two of Steve while we try to figure out what's working and what's not. <laughs> he said blue well, go. <laughs> All right, so he is going to reboot and while we do that, let's see. see. Well, let's talk a little. Let's talk a little kayak fishing while he's getting that all set up. All right. Uh, we had uh, uh, Chad Hoover put out a video in the middle of last week, and he had uh, already had the KBF, the front part of that schedule out. And, uh, you know, I just listened to that today, actually, um, while I was uh, cutting some grass. And uh, <clears throat> this is kind of from memory and shooting off the hip, but um, I know they're going back to uh, Kissimmee uh, for the first one, which is always. What about now? <laughs> you got it now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go as long as we can, so. All right. Speed, speed round. Sorry. Oh, man, man. Well, 
Steve, welcome to the show, man. Um, and I feel like uh, feel like you are well versed in the craziness that is that can be the Faith and Fishing podcast now. Uh, so go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and, and tell us who Steve o, Steve Owens is, man. Uh, I'm Steve Owens. Uh, I've been a kayak tournament fisherman for about eight years. Uh, tournament director for about seven. Uh, got started uh, in this um, when I moved to Lake Chickamauga. Uh, moved here in 2011 and 2013, 2012 or 2013. My buddy Ryan uh, Lambert, uh, he, he was getting, you know, a kayak and so uh, I got off work and he and I went and bought a Yakima rack for my car and drove to North Carolina and from Chattanooga, Tennessee and picked up a, a native FX tandem, the old school canoe looking one. And, uh, and we fished around for about a year and he got into some tournament stuff and got me into it and, uh, you know, can't stand him ever since. But uh, no, it, it's been it's been a great it's been a great 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 time. And then, you know, he uh, he had started a grassroots club with some people here in town. And um, and after my shift schedule changed, I, I started fishing it and took over. You know, I was like lead director of that club, and, and that's Tennessee Valley Kayak Anglers. And we uh, we fish Chickamauga Gunnersville. Uh, you know, made my way through some other tournament stuff and. Got to uh, work with Bassmaster and, and currently do Bass Nation and uh, direct with the Hobie BOS and for the college series and you know, a bunch of other stuff and just uh, work with dugout bait tackle and just uh, I don't know man it's been it's been it's been an awesome journey uh, and uh, it's still going I, I still still am passionate about it I uh, enjoy you know when we get to get new people joining. But uh, my main goal kind of with dugout and tournament directing is um, highlighting our anglers. You know, my job to partner them with people that they want to be partnered with and grow those relationships. Uh, you know, I'm married, got a great wife, Jordan. You know, you guys see some of our little travels and vacations. Uh, uh, got my son, he's grown. I uh, had him when I was in high school, so uh, he's grown good good man you know we got a great relationship he's 29 um got four little granddaughters uh just uh you know nephew spent a lot of time with and just uh i don't know man we, we try to do as much as we can outdoors and, and just together really so um got a huge extended family with the kayak community something i'm very very blessed to be a part of uh you know we, we none of us feel like we deserve what we get but I really don't because man, we, it's just so good to me. And uh, it's great to be like, you know, part of what we get to do tonight and just kind of talk about, you know, what, uh, what's a sensitive subject to a lot of people, but it's the most important subject to everyone, whether they realize it or not, but you just have to be able to not sacrifice the truth, but find the way that, the Lord would have you present it to them so that they are as accepting of it as they're going to be. And that's very hard, very, very hard. I, I, could, I don't understand how these ministers navigate what they do, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so I just want to pull one thing from that story because you said, uh, and I'll, I'll give a little quick backstory on this. You know, you, you watch... Uh, KBN and you see Lambert sitting there and he just looks like a regular sized dude. I went to Toledo Bend was the first time that I saw him in person and he's a big son of a gun. He's a and so man. Yeah, he is. He's and I've seen some pictures with you and him side by side and, and you're a big old boy yourself. No. So I would have liked to seen both of y'all in that native fishing together yeah. So that that had to be a, a quite the adventure there. Well, now I'll say this: we didn't actually get in it together. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, but yeah, we now we've gotten into about everything we could in those days and everything. But uh, yeah. We, All right. I thought you said it was a tandem. I was like, man, if them boys was in that thing together, I was like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and, and he, you know, he used to be a skinny fella. You know, you can look back at some of our pictures because he and I have been friends for. <laughs> Golly, what is this? Twenty two. We've probably been friends. Golly, since it's probably been 
15, 16 years. I mean, a long, long time, way before fishing. You know, we went right ball games and stuff together and just, you know, running buddies and whatnot and just doing whatever. He, he always had some sort of mud boat or duck boat, you know, and, and that's what we kind of fished out of. And then uh, his little daughter, Mackenzie, was, was getting, you know, to where, you know, he, he she was going everywhere. And, and he used to have a little turkey seat that he would put behind his uh, propel when we got those. And she would sit in that little, that little you know, the little tripod seat. Oh, yeah. Big. She'd, she'd sit back there and about as long as she could. It'd be a couple of hours and she was ready to jump in or throw rocks or something. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh man, it just seems like forever ago, you know? But, it goes by quick. It does, it does. Like Mackenzie, she's a uh that's his daughter. She's a a really good athlete and volleyball player. And uh and she's starting to catch up with him with that wind. So he's he's got it cut out for him. All y'all got, got the quick wind, but got it too. So it's a good time, man. You know, that's uh he's he's my family and, and if it weren't for him, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at in, in this community and uh, you know, especially the confidence that he gives me because that's something, you know, I don't have naturally and you know, he's always been right there, you know. It's like uh, you know, if I look up and I see him there, then you know, I kinda know I'm gonna be all right because, you know, just just kinda the way it goes. Yeah, man. So let's let's talk about some of the uh, some of the trails that you you have and that you do um, kind of direct. So, um, which uh, which trails are you directing right now? Uh, right now, uh, Tennessee Valley Kayak Anglers, which is our grassroots club in Tennessee. We're part of CAST, which is our governing body. There's ten other ten clubs total in the uh, just so that every region gets representation. You know, because you know. It, if we didn't have it, we would all be driving six hours to fish a tournament. But uh, uh, it's worked great. We're very organized. Uh, the rules that we have are actually what KBF kind of took uh, and and, and ripped they started writing their rules off of. And uh, uh, it's pretty simple and basic. Um, so we do that. Our, our state championship's coming up in about a month on Kentucky Lake. Be about a hundred and some anglers in it. <clears throat> Uh, I co-direct Tennessee Bass Nation Kayak Series with Daniel Davis, uh, along with Georgia Bass Nation Kayak Series. Um, I kind of do the booking, the organizing, the, the planning, and getting the sponsor stuff in order. And, uh, and then Daniel and I judge each state's fish with one another. Um, and then he runs, he's ran, this year he ran literally, I think, all the Tennessee events, except for Del Hollow. We ran it together. Um, and then uh, we, we have a dugout. Uh, bait and tackle online series that we do uh don't know if i'm gonna have time to get it started this year but it'll be it'll be some if, if we don't do it this winter we'll probably do it in the spring uh but that's typically october november december uh weekly winners weekly qualifiers to our 50 angler championship and um i mean i think we give away around 30 grand in prizes during those three months and uh, we average 111 the first year and 109 last year uh, per month, uh, pretty, pretty, you know, happy with that, and, and and it's designed to give back to the anglers that support the shop. Um, and then the uh, Hobie Bass Open Series College Tour, uh, you know, I, I you know work with Hobie and you know AJ McWhorter doing that. AJ's you know a good friend of ours. He lives 25 minutes from me here in Tennessee, and uh, we spend a lot of time together. And uh, just uh, you know, always you know you know how it is. You, you have. You know, it's hard to be able to talk to people and relate about certain things unless that's what they do too. So he, he he's along with a few other people in the country that, that you can actually talk tournament director stuff and be a person that can can speak that same kind of language. And it's been great to have him. And you know, Cody Prather, he doesn't live far from us now, and uh, he's a huge resource. Uh, just a just the, the insight and the, the perspective that those two give on not just kayak fishing but friendship and life are invaluable. Um, so we've actually got our last tournament of the season for the Co Hobie College Series on Lake Gunnersville this weekend. And then the uh, championship will be on Lake Hartwell in November. So, uh, and I kind of, kind of, that's all I'm actually committed to right now. You know, there's some other things on the table, uh, but as those come, some things will go away. But uh, that's that's my busy schedule. Plus I have a, you know, a regular, regular, uh, daytime job and I work remote for dugout bait and tackle so that's awesome yeah so um, 
I've I've heard a little bit about some of the some of the challenges that um, that go. Excuse me, this uh, this uh, sparkling water was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> the uh, I heard a few of the difficulties that that tournament directors go through. Um, uh, some some of them came from from you whenever you were uh, talking to Armando over on Bass Kayak and Beers. Shout out to Armando. We love him over here. He's he's been on here a couple of times and he's a he's a great guy. Um, but he is uh, he is outspoken about some of the changes that he thinks need to needs to happen in a in a few different trails. So um, so what kind of uh, for our uh, listeners who may may fish in a local trail or something but never really uh never really paid attention to the director side of things what are some of the challenges that you you end up facing i think uh, the the biggest challenge is is you know and it sounds cliche but i really do want to hear everyone's opinion but a lot of people just don't know how to share their opinion in a constructive way to where you don't get ticked off and just kind of like you know hey buddy look all intents and purposes we're doing this for free so that you can have fun along with ourselves but you know it you know dumb it down it's for each of you two as well to have fun just as a collective group you know that gets represented but that's one of the biggest challenges the uh the other challenge is is kind of people's logical thinking i mean because you know we, we schedule like right now we're scheduling for next year and we're working around one another so let's just say, you know, we book a tournament in April on, on a lake and the next thing you know, a boat tournament gets dropped on it or it rains or there's a big strong winds. It's always, well, we should have had it a week later. They would have been by, you know, that kind of thing. But, but those are things that you have to learn to kind of push away. Um, but uh, that, that's really about it. I mean, the, the rest is just your time, you know, which is something that we all wish we had more of. Um, you, you take somebody like me and AJ who take on about everything that, that we can, you know, and it's just, and, and, but, but the good thing of it is you get, you know, like John Ferguson, our good buddy here, he's helped us with a lot of things. You get Daniel Davis and, and people like that, that come out of the woodwork or not necessarily woodwork, but, but like what, what something we do in our grassroots club is, you know, we put three sets of eyes when we would judge in person on the phone. Uh, so I would judge a fish, Lambert would judge a fish, and we would pick a person per tournament to judge with us as well so that you learned, number one, how we do what we do, so in case you're ever needed. The other thing that we found what it was doing is it was showing you how to not make mistakes anymore, you know, because you were judging these fish and you were seeing what was happening. Um, you know, and, and the, the you know, everybody always is, you know, really, you know, anything you need, give me a shout. Anything you need, give me a shout. Well, you know, it's needed, uh, but we'll get, a lot of times we're not going to ask for it. But, but we do have some really good people around here that kind of see that we're not going to ask, but we really do need them. Uh, they'll take the initiative. You know, we've got Jonathan Callball, Casey Smith, some other anglers in our grassroots club, and, you know, Charles Armstrong. And he hadn't fished in a long time. You know, he fished two or three years with us and uh, started a new career. And then just out of the blue, he fished our uh, Tennessee Bass Nation Douglas tournament and qualified for the state championship. And as soon as he showed up, you know, he's grabbing chairs and tables, you know, and we get a lot of help from people, you know. Um, and uh, and then he actually ended up qualifying for the Bassmaster Classic Championship in March. So uh, he actually got the last spot, and I finished right behind him. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you got – I mean, you're busy, and, and people know that about you. You got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, you know, looking forward and looking at uh, the stuff you guys do with your grassroots, looking at the uh, Bass Nation, uh, the Hobie stuff, uh, KBF. Long term, where do you see these the, the three main trails? How do you see that? And, and what would be your vision for that? I think if you ask people right now, most people would say in the kayak world, you know, the kind of AJ and, and Hobie are kind of sitting in the catbird seat and rightly so because he does a great job running that. You go to one of those tournaments and you know it it, it just feels a little bit different than than the others. Um, but 
how do you see that kind of shaking out and, and where would you see that, you know, in the future, how those three trails, what do you think is going to happen with that? Uh, and, and like you said, you know, Hobie deservedly. So, you know, AJ, uh, AJ is, is, you know, a person that is perfectionist, but what he's being a perfectionist about is something that he wants to be really good because he knows how much we all enjoy fishing. Um, Hobie has always given him the support he's needed. Now, he's had to go and, and work hard to get that from them because it's not easy to get pennies from people. But uh, Hobie's been very, very good as a company overall in anything that's ever needed with that. Um, but but he did. You know, he knew right out of the gate the main thing is to be in, uh, work with integrity. Um, and something Lambert and I learned with our grassroots club because we've messed up. Because literally for four years, everything we did was brand new to all of us. Lightning storms. You know, uh, people being late for check-ins, uh, blurred pictures, identifier codes that were jumbled up. I mean, we had to handle all that. And, and when we would mess up, we literally the next day would make a post or call all of our people. And we would just say, hey, guys, here's where we screwed up. You know, we'll, we'll try to do it again. And they not ever once had a problem with it. And, and that's something AJ's been really good at is getting out front and saying, you know, this is what we need to do better. Um, and, and, and we're scared to death to make a mistake because you get vilified, you get made fun of, you get plastered everywhere. And, and I don't, I, I can handle about anything that comes my way, but sadly I still struggle with disrespect or, you know, rudeness or whatever. Uh, but, uh, but, but as far as the Hobie goes, you know, it's, it's where it needs to be because of the hard work put into it. The anglers have supported it. Uh, bass, you know, I was, you know, fortunate to, to be part of the crew that helped get that started and built and, and run the first year. And the, uh, the, the, the problem with bass was literally that the, uh, they did not have a clientele in house that had the amount of time to run it that they needed. Uh, that it was probably less than 10% of their overall, you know, time management to run that series. And that's been literally, you know, said to us as we were helping them figure some things out that's changed now you know they're they're out they're looking and interviewing to hire a direct kayaker to handle it and they've been very vocal and listened to any format changes that we think need to happen uh, because you know when you're on the fly the easiest thing that they could have done was try to get us to operate like the boat world does that's the easiest way for that to work with them except for the fact of there's countless numbers of us who have done it our kayak way and it's not perfect but you can either try to make everyone do the way you do it or you can try to do what you do one singular person the way the kayak industry is and has been already for a very long time and i think that they just got overwhelmed because there was one body trying to do it all um and that's changing like i said and, and the uh they, they understand uh, there's a public perception of not caring, which is not true. Um, they do. It's just like I said, they were understaffed. Um, you know, they were, there's the bass is not a big, big, big place. I mean, there's there's not a lot of people in office and in house. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, there were some uh, some uh, some uh, a gentleman that passed away that, that ran a lot. And uh, his job duties were split to two or three people who already had more on them because there was a hiring process for someone to run a certain section of that place and that didn't get to happen in a timely manner and then COVID hit and threw all the schedules so they literally had to reschedule the entire series in, in, in two or three weeks uh, because uh, the, the year that I, I was going to run most of that season the kayak schedule we had was it was amazing um and but that got undone and then you know some things came into my life that that are blessings but i had to step away uh for a time but uh but i i feel like you know when they do get that person in there this year uh they do they i mean we've I've already gotten confirmations that the the changes that need to happen to bring them in line will happen uh, after that it takes the anglers being constructive um uh, and and in being constructive, communicate in the way we need to, to help them, you know, bring along things on social media because they do understand that that's something that, um, you know, we're a social media driven sport. Uh, so I think they'll get it right. Uh, we'll continue to do our Bass Nation stuff, which feeds that. And in doing so, it, it helps educate, you know, them even more so. And, uh, and on the KBF, you know, they, that's, 
that's I just I really don't discuss that very often. I mean they they've been at it long enough. Uh, you know it, it's obvious what they need to do, and uh, that's just up to them to do those kind of things to uh, to uh, keep keep something that's been popular and needed in the sport relevant. Cool. Yeah. So uh, let's dive into your faith, also, man. So um, kind of let us know what it is that you believe, how you came to believe that. Um, like, what's your faith story, man? Um, I uh, I believe you know Jesus Christ is is, is our Lord and Savior, and you know, he he died on the cross for remission of our sins, and and, it, and it's through uh, grace without you know without works. And I mean, it, it's it's a gift that's there. Um, and, and how I came to that. Um, and that's the only way. That's, there's there's one path, in my opinion, to eternity, um, and and eternity is not necessarily should be what everyone's focus is. It's it's your relationship with God, um, and I tell a lot of people, you know, even my son and some some others that that struggle sometimes in their faith is, you can't let what you know Cam or Robert or myself do, you know, how we represent, you know, our faith. Uh, I don't even use the word Christianity much anymore because it, it has gotten so hijacked and turned into a spectacle or a sporting event or, 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 or a tool of ridicule by the devil that's, that, you know, tricked people. Uh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in, in, in worshiping, you know, him as a disciple, hopefully to help bring people, you know, to eternity with us. But uh, you can't let what a church does right or wrong draw you in to an extent. It, it's you. You seek your relationship with him, and he will take you where you need to go. Um, and, and sometimes that's because he closes a door and forces you forward. And then sometimes it's just he opens one and, and, and lets it sit there, and some sort of aroma kind of just pulls you there. But how I came to that, I mean, I was raised in a good family, uh, good people, you know, believed in God. We had Bibles and stuff. We didn't have church life. Uh, what I did do is I had a good friend of mine that lived across the holler from us. You know, we, we were from the country. Uh, his family, you know, they went to church. And so I'd go with them occasionally um, and, and went to a, a little Nazarene daycare growing up. So, you know, we'd have, you know, vacation Bible school, stuff like that. So, you know, we, we heard the stories and things like that. Didn't see a lot of personal application. Started working with my uncle. Uh, just doing construction stuff as, as extra money when I was like in middle school and stuff. And, uh, um, you know, he, he was a minister, you know, he had been to, to school, uh, for to seminary school and everything. He wasn't practicing, but, but, you know, we talked a lot, you know, and he, he was an interesting person to talk to. He's, he's my best friend for a long time. Um, so he got, you know, he kind of got me interested, you know, stirred my interest in, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm believing God and this, that, and the other. I didn't have salvation in my heart at all. So, you know, rocked on probably, um, I graduated high school in 93. So about 95, 96, I was working, uh, I was a reactor operator right out of high, I got a phenomenal job right out of high school. So working on my, my chemical plant job and gentlemen invited us to church. Like you have those people on every job, you know? And so we go and it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a play, uh, at a big church here in town. And it was, uh, it was about, you know, revelation coming, you know, and, and it, it was, it was a very good play. It was well, well articulated props and all about heaven, hell, you know, and, and so I'm sitting thinking, oh, okay, okay. Well, I've always, I was always a, a history uh, and, and like a political minded person, even young. So I love reading. And, uh, and so I'm reading these books about what's going on in the Persian Gulf and things like that. And then I start reading book of revelation and I'm like, whoa, you know, this is some crazy stuff. And, so uh, what, what do I need to prepare for, you know, this tribulation period? You know, we got to have water. So I'm sitting here in my mind, you know, again, you know, I'm, what, what is this? This is 95. So I'm 20, 20, 21 years old. And my mind is like, okay, we got to prepare for this, you know, until he bails us out. And, and then one day the Lord put it on my heart. He was like, bud, you, you don't have to prepare for that stuff. You know, you, you need to be seeking me, you know. And, and a scripture came across about how we'll be judged on how we raise our children. Um, you know, well, I had a small son, you know, like I said, he's born in 93, so he's two or three years old. And, uh, and my ex-wife and I, we, we weren't great. You know, we, we, we weren't raised the way we acted. We, we were, you know, sadly abusive to one another and, and just, just, you know, had a lot of hate and anger, you know, and then, um, some years passed and, uh, and, and through some friends that I worked with, 
um, you know, started visiting a church in our hometown, uh, which is Lambert. We're both from Jasper, Tennessee, basically. So started visiting that church, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm seeing these things. And, and, and there's a gentleman I work with named Paul. Uh, and, and I was quick, like you, like you know, you know, those people that are like, well, I don't want to be a Christian if you act like that. You know, well, Paul was the guy that did it the right way. He came to work. He did his job. So he's witnessing just not even really directly, but I'm listening to him tell these stories about things that you know, are happening in his life after they pray and everything. So, you know, my ex-wife and I, you know, we, we start going to church and, and uh, one of my best friends from high school, um, yeah, he, he had returned real, real, real religious. I mean, I'm talking about like, you know, hey, how you doing, David? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. Hey, what do you think about, you know, and he just would always, bang, just punch you right in the mouth of Jesus, you know, and you were just like, come on, man, you know. And, and so I started getting to hang out with him more. And uh, in about 1998, uh, I finally, you know, I just started reading. And, and as I'm reading through the Bible and I'm reading these stories, every time something happened with Jesus, like if he did it for the, the lady at the well, in my mind as I'm reading, it was me. I was in every story that I read, it was me. And, and it was something I didn't even realize until years later. You know, I'm falling in love with this person that is just doing this for these people. And now you gotta remember, I already know what's gonna happen to this guy, you know? They're gonna betray him and kill him, but he's still, and he knows this, and he's just over and over and over doing this for these people that, that he knows are gonna betray him or hurt him later, and I'm just like, you know, this guy's amazing. You know, he does care. He literally loves us and is doing this unselfishly. I, I, want to, I want to experience that. I want to have him, which is something that a lot of people miss, and Cody Prather has helped me with this, is, you know, the gift of salvation is there, you know, but he has to be the Lord of your life. You've got to let him have it and, you know, guide you, you know, and not in the, the mainstream way where they think we're just, you know, blinded or just led like we're fools that's just not it they don't something people miss and i think i do a good job remembering when i'm talking to people who don't believe exactly what we do is, is you can read a book you can live all kinds of things but we always neglect or forget the fact that things that are happening are supernatural they can't be explained it, it's different between all of us based off of what we need each time so um, you know, uh, found salvation and, and was all in, and, and my ex-wife as well. You know, she came to know the Lord. Some other people in our family, and you know, but but the things we had done to one another, it was kind of just it was too much for 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 her and her heart to be able to you know continue to live. So we're together. So I mean, it was one of those where you know you're a great husband, you're a great wife, this and the other. So sadly, you know, I can't explain it. You know, sadly, you know, we, we, we divorced and we moved on and, 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 and that all happened that I got fired from that great job, um, had to leave my family and my dad died at 51 years old from a staff infection, you know, all in like a month. And, and so, so that, that led me at about 29 years old to, you know, being a person that worked every day and, and had a family to, um, just living you know i was self-medicating you know with, with booze and stuff you know and just partying you know doing whatever i could you know um to, to just take my mind off of everything and now granted you know i didn't do those kind of things from after high school all i did was work and so i'm i'm, I'm getting I'm, I'm having fun here you know I, I've, I've always been a person at work we played sports you know at work and stuff and i had family stuff my dad my mom and all of them but I never, I never had that big, massive group. So, I, so I get out there and I start realizing that you know we've got charisma and we're we're doing all this, and I just went down, you know, a road there for for several. I was an absentee dad. It was like, his, you know, I'd go get my son and we'd have a decent time, and it was all I could do to hurry up getting back so I could run off and leave and get to bars with my friends. Or we traveled, but we'd go to Nashville, Knoxville, Atlanta, and uh, I mean, I just it was just. It was just off. I mean, I run around with, you know, with, with biker gangs and street gangs, just lived in places that shouldn't be but just because, you know, I would befriend somebody there. And then I just turned into, 
just 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 something I wasn't proud of. And uh, slowly but surely, you know, I, I got to be, you know, the Lord put some people in my life. Uh, a, a, a girl that I was dating actually looked at me one day and she said, "You know, you, you're you're not the person." here that you are when you're away from everybody that you know and and it shamed me and it was which was conviction um and so i left that and uh, just started putting my head down you know and uh and i got another you know killer job you know that i deserved because because my experience and, and stuff and just slowly started fixing me and then met my my current wife now you know she she was a homebody and just you know she didn't do anything and then uh, met her with some mutual friends and and just i realized you know that's person one and and you've got to be a person not not only that she deserves or you deserve but a person that can treat her or anyone like they need to be treated and uh, she's a believer and and so you know we, we didn't live together we, we, we'd go to church and, and, and stuff and you know, my son had moved in with me, and I'm talking about like, you know, he was 12, 12 years old. He lived in a bachelor pad with me and two roommates. I mean, you know, so uh, that that was that took some undoing, uh, a lot, you know, some years. Uh, um, but uh, that, uh, you know, it's, you know, I didn't deserve it, but the Lord knew I needed that person, and, and, and it was her. It was Jordan. And she, she she's a very quiet person. You know, we have great communication, but she's very quiet. But she's just, and, and it's it's odd to say she reminds me so much of my dad. It's because my dad was a very quiet person, but when when he walked somewhere, people respected him because of who he was. He's very kind, generous, giving. He's a six four, two forty. I mean, he's a big man, six five almost, and just uh, athletic and just uh, just was a presence. But but people knew who he was, and. Uh, that's the way it was with Jordan with me is I knew, you know, she she didn't deserve nor would she tolerate how I was. And she never even said a word like that. I just knew it. And so the, the Lord brought me like through around there and uh you know, and I still have my struggles, you know, but but one thing that I do know is that my witness and my purpose on this earth is to share my failures so that people don't think, Man, I can't do this. Look at what I do. You know, that's why I mentioned the mental health stuff. You know, I during all that, I failed to mention, you know, I had crippling, crippling depression and anxiety. I would lay in bed for weeks at a time and, and be off on leave of absence from work. The phone would ring and I would just panic. It's like, oh, my gosh, what is the, you know, And it was just and the whole time. I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you? Your life's good. Why are you feeling this way? And it was situational stuff. And then I went through a couple of years of counseling, a lot of good stories there about how the Lord just opened doors that weren't even physical to get me where I needed to be. And, and it was all situational. It wasn't anything chemical or anything like that. It was situational. I had to learn how to slow everything down where I could process and think about what I needed to do to, to react. And uh, then I learned, you know, pretty quickly from Dottie, my therapist is, to not let you bring me out of character, because because I'm I am very bad about having to go back and apologize to you because I said something too quickly instead of just letting the situation go, uh, and I and I don't like that. I don't like having to tell you that I hurt your feelings or I'm sorry for something I said. So that's I've uh, I've adopted that. That my dad was that way. You know, he would just let a lot of things go by. You know, except for what needed to be talked about. And, um, so, so beating that, you know, um, and my son has some anxiety and helping him through that. And, uh, I learned through Dottie how to kind of counsel and help, uh, people cope with that. And so that's become very important to me and has for the last 10 or 12 years. Um, especially since we've gotten into this sport, because I realized quickly how many of us all have it from time to time. And it's not even like it used to be where you would go seek treatment for it. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got some form of anxiety or something that society or the devil or whomever his evil spirits have conditioned us to have these depressions and, and sadnesses when if you would just get off of this device or turn the television off and go outside, just walk to Home Depot and start saying hi to people, you're going to feel better. You will. I used to sit in the parking lot for hours and hours in my car and listen to third day CDs or whatever. 
And then finally, I literally was just like, you know what? You need to get up and walk around. And I'd go in the stores and just people would say, hey, how you doing? Immediately would feel better. And so that that's something that, you know, I just shared it with a good friend today. You know, she was laying in bed, disheartened over the way of the world. And I was like, bud, that's going to that's gonna be this way till we're gone. So let's focus on whatever we need to today to not have all of that. And, uh, and so, you know, now uh, we've got a, a really good church home around here. Um, I want to be more active in it. It's something that we're, we're called to do all the time. Um, and, and I think it's more important now than ever that we share the gospel the way it needs to be shared. It, it's, it's our job to tell one another what we are doing wrong because we're brothers in the Lord. We're believers. We know that's what Scripture tells us. When it comes to non-believers, it's not my place to tell them they need to quit this or quit that. It's simply that there's something here for you and you need to, you know, you want to talk about it, we'll go that route. You know, let him take care of everything else because like I said, it happens supernaturally. Um, And that's something that gets lost and it's going to continue to get buried just because of the way the world is accelerating in what it does, you know, as the end times approach, you know, um, scripture says it's going to be like this. If you just imagine how bad it was back in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff like that, we're nowhere near that, you know. There was a good heart there in, in these places, and we, we still have plenty of good light here. And so that's where I was, I was sharing with Christine, is don't, don't, let, don't let that light get buried. You know, call somebody. And, and I don't mean to keep rambling on about it. it it's, uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll find all kinds of sidebars to go this way. That way so. uh, but mental health is very important. So. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to uh, talk to the listeners real quick, and I'm just going to say, this might be the episode where I'm going to tell you to pause right here, go back to where I asked that question and listen to it again. Cause there are so many things that are just, like, that just need to be heard. Um, and I, there's no way I'm going to touch on all of them, but man, what a story. Um, yeah, I, it's it's funny your dad sounds an awful lot like my grandpa steel my grandpa steel you know he was he was six four he would if you if you ever watched uh if you ever watched hee haw um the character string bean yeah looked just like my grandpa steel um and he was six four and uh he was a he was a pastor in the methodist church and all the other pastors in the in the denomination called him gentle ben um, and he, uh, he was, um, he was the kind that he was always quiet. He grew up with a real bad speech impediment. So he, he like, like the ints in, uh, in, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, it takes a long time to say anything in old entish. So you never say anything unless it's worth taking a long time to say that was, that was what he was. Yeah. And, uh, he, um, like when he taught people listened and, um, you know, my dad, the way my dad says it is, you know, I only saw my dad mad once and I deserved it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And I mean, just, you know, what you said about mental health, you know, that's, I, I, that's so important for, for people to hear. Um, especially, especially in the religious, uh, uh, context, you know, we, we hear so many times somebody comes up and, and shares their, their testimony is like, you know, I was going through depression and then I found Jesus and now I'm good kind of thing. But like, it's, there's a lot of details in there that, yeah, absolutely. It's so important for you to say, you know, I, I, I got counseling, I got help. Um, you know, yes, Jesus helps, but sometimes you need, you need some, uh, some other help too. Not that Jesus isn't enough, but Jesus can use somebody else to, uh, to get you pointed in the right direction and get you and pull you out of out of depression or your um, help you work through your anxiety in in a way that they had that Jesus has equipped them to be able to help you. Um, so very very important there. Um, and then just so many little things that you know, um, you know, I'm sure there's a pastor listening. It's like, well, there's a sermon. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> That's a good one right here too. (laughs) 
Yeah, I think it's you know a couple of things from that, and and we've talked on the last few uh, episodes about <clears throat> God's timing and and when He opens or closes in some cases some doors or He puts people in your life, and I mean that Steve's story is just another great example of that, and and His timing is perfect. We might not always agree with it, uh, and we might not always understand it at the moment, but. I can't tell you how many times I've looked back on situations or things that have happened. And at the time, you know, you don't understand it. And and you think sometimes it's the worst thing in the world that could have happened. And then you look back on it and and a certain amount of time goes by and you look back on it and you say that was perfect because now all these other things happen because, because that did. Uh, So, you know, that's just another example of that. And then on the lighter side of things, excuse me, I grew up in Clarksville, Tennessee. So on the other side of Interstate 24 from Nashville and and Chattanooga, and you mentioned that you grew up in the holler. So I'm just wondering, is it in Chattanooga in the holler, did they name it by like the family that lived in the holler? Because and around Clarksville and Dover, Tennessee and Stewart County, they named them by whatever family, like it would be Shepherd Holler or Lehman Holler. And so was that the same down there? Did they name it by the family name? Yeah, I was actually, uh, I was actually, hear me. Uh, <laughs> I, I was actually raised in, in, in uh, after, uh, I think I, we were 9, 10, 11, something like that, uh, in Helltown. Helltown's where I'm originally from, right there okay. in the county. In, and it was Hicks Hollow. Hicks okay. Hollow was the, All right. Is the Hicks? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's the Hicks. So yeah. Yep. Hicks. Hicks Holler. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, there are a couple questions we always make sure that we ask everybody, and you are no different. So I uh, want to make sure that we've got enough time to ask. Yeah. Uh, what fishing story or memory means the most to you? Uh. Now I've got so many of the stories that you mean, like memory or catch. Memory. Okay. Memory. Uh, I'd have to say, and this hit me the other day when you were listening. I was re-listening to you, you talk to Jim Moore. I was, you know, I used to direct KBF tournaments, and uh, and we had one on Chickamauga one day, and uh, it was a. Uh, can't remember if it was my dad's birthday ish or when he died the anniversary of his death you know he died in 06 and, and i started fishing at 11 or 12 so he'd been gone a while well i'm out in the water you know putting in and uh i, w- I was fishing a, a slew and and then i was kind of you know having a moment you know kind of like you know rest in peace rebecca golden the golden hour i mean the sun was at that moment um and I was just thanking the Lord, you know, I was just like, you know, I was thinking of my dad, a little bit emotional, and uh, I'll cry, I'll drop my hat. So as I'm thinking, I just stopped. I took my hat off, laid my rod down, and just was just like, Lord, thank you. Thank you for being here. And about that time, it was a shad spawn. As far as I could see, sun blinding me, looking down at this golden water, shad flickered everywhere. It was just like I was boiling in that that water. It was just so gorgeous. I mean, it's nothing but gold splashes everywhere. It was it was it's, it, <laughs> it it sounds kind of strange, but it was kind of like he was just like, "Hey, buddy, you're welcome. I'm here." And, and that that's that that's the, the memory that has stuck out for for th- two or three days now, because uh, I, I I thought you might ask that question, and that's the one that that was it. I mean, it was. I mean, he was there. That was a. Uh, it's pretty spectacular. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So, <clears throat> when you go out on the water and you're fishing with you with a group of guys uh, or, or girls, I mean, what do you guys? What's your conversation like? What are you usually talking about? Man, really, just much of nothing. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk kayak stuff, life stuff, sports, just whatever. I mean, we just we just carry on about whatever. I mean, it is really whatever's going on you know yeah yeah it's it's a bunch of nothing really i hear you that's awesome well man with all of our guests we always do a segment called what's your favorite 
It's self-explanatory. We're going to ask you your favorite in a few different categories. And I am not going to risk the uh, technical difficulties coming back. So I'm not going to play the ad right here. I will add it in post. Um, <laughs> so we are going to dive right into it. Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle in Greensboro, North Carolina offers a wide range of products and services designed to help protect the environment and enhance the time people spend enjoying the outdoors. With an expansive year-round inventory of kayaks, sups, bikes, kayak fishing accessories, paddling clothing, biking accessories, and more, Get Outdoors has established itself as one of the top paddle sports and biking shops in the southeast. They also offer a wide range of kayak safety and technique courses to get you comfortable in your new boat. They'll even get it rigged up for you. Stop by the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or check them out at shopgetoutdoors.com. Robert, you want to get us started off? Sure, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite scripture? Uh, Romans eight twenty eight. All things work for those who glory and love in the Lord. And it's it, it's not that you'll get everything because you love the Lord. It's just whatever, like, like you mentioned a little bit earlier, I think you alluded to, whatever you go through, you know, it, it's going to be all right because you're His. Not because of you, anything you do, anything you say, because you're His. And, and he's going to let you be all right. You may you may come to, to leave this world early, but it's just because that was what was best for you. Uh, and so that that's it for me. Romans eight twenty eight. It's been a life verse for me. Um, and uh, I, I, I was, I'm blessed to have a friend since we were in kindergarten, five years old. Um, first person I really kind of witnessed to after I had you know learned faith, so to speak. He was an atheist, but he listened to me. And fast forward about eight, eight or 12 years later, I was divorcing, standing in my mom's backyard, and I turned and looked. And at my mom's neighbor's yard was my best friend from childhood who was getting a divorce. And I turned and I was like, Travis? And he's like, Steve. And we walked up and I knew. We just fell all over each other, crying, hugging. I knew he, he had been saved. And, and, and he did. He said, I want to thank you for that. And that was his life verse. And, and I it just it hit me, too. You know, and so that's it. Romans 8, 28. That's awesome. That's powerful. What about a uh, what about a particular f- story from the Bible? Is there one of those that's your favorite? <laughs> I was listening to Jim here and I was telling my wife and, and, and uh, another friend here lately. It's it's the it's the demise of King Saul. Um, that's what we've been studying is uh, is that the book of Samuel at church and you know and, and, and you see it coming and and but it's really been laid on my heart how many times the Lord will show you you know here is Saul this the mightiest being ever and instead of you know he expels all the witches and the, the fortune tellers but when he needs something that's who he goes and seeks the people he shunned, instead of going to a rabbi or a preacher or something, that's who he went. And then they even told him, the Lord revealed to them, hey, here's what's going to happen to you here. You'll change your ways. 24 hours, you and your kids are dead. And he still does it. Uh, that's us. That's us. We, we, will, we will stick our hand to that stove until we are engulfed in flames. And I'm guilty of it uh, a lot. And, and it, it makes me angry. I hate it. It's something I struggle with, but I'm going to beat it. Um, but uh, that's it. It's just the demise of King Saul. So it's nothing glamorous or, or warm and fuzzy. So yeah, just uh, pay attention to how you're living or he'll get your attention. So Yeah, that's right. right. So uh, going to some, to some fishing questions, what's your favorite fish to catch? So once it hits the lure and you're reeling it in, what's your, what's your favorite one to catch and reel in? Smallmouth. I catch predominantly largemouth because I live on Chickamauga. They're smallmouth here. But there's a reason we fish Del Hollow every year in December. Uh, it's because it's it just, I'm sure you've been in Clarksville. You might have made it over that way. Or, oh, yeah. Or, yeah. I went to school at Tennessee Tech in Cookville, so I was right there for, there you go. for a while. So it was, uh, it's, it's a beautiful place, no doubt. All right, that's awesome. What about, uh, what about your favorite fish to fish for? Uh, bass. That's kind of being flat honest with you. Other than crappie, that's that's what you know. That's what I fish for. I mean, I've done some offshore deep sea red fishing fun. Red fishing's fun, but I don't get to target that. So it, it's bad. 
Yeah, red fishing is is right up there. We had a conversation about that uh, not too long ago. So, what about to eat? What's your favorite fish to eat? Uh, man, I tell you the truth. My wife and I did a. Uh, we went to Niagara two days, Boston two days. Got to see me Yankees at Fenway. Uh, we won one of the last. We've lost probably thirty five out of the last thirty six games, but we won that night. Um, and then we did two days in Cape Cod and then five days in Maine. The two days that we were in Cape Cod, we sat out and ate. Uh, it's it's Alaskan cod or, or whatever it is. Maybe they may have cod in Maine. I don't know, but that's what that fish was, and it hands down was probably one of the best meals we've ever had. So I like mahi mahi, but but cod is probably my favorite. It's pretty mild, but uh, whatever it is they've got in Cape Cod, that fish was it. Huh. Yeah, up there, I think it's the Atlantic cod that they're that they're okay. eating. But okay. yeah, yeah, they. Uh, that's interesting. Sushi, the sushi, I really like. I can't. I can't eat. I have. I'm allergic to shellfish. But seared ahi tuna. That that that's. I'm gonna back yeah. up. Seared ahi tuna. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's good oh, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, since we're talking about food, what is your favorite fishing snack? My what? Favorite fishing snack. Snack. Uh, for me, it, it's probably my wife will go and get a thirty count Chick Fil A the night before. I learned that from Garrett Campbell, and I'll put it in my cooler, and and, and, and about ten o'clock, I'll set it out under my seat. It'll warm up a little bit, so I get Chick Fil A about every tournament. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about body of water? What's your favorite body of water to fish? Seminole or Gunnersville. I, I, I fished Seminole about seven or eight times. I don't live very far from Gunnersville, and in that, I'd, I'd say, man, that's tough. Seminole's amazing. Those, you know, it's, it's down close to Florida. Those fish are. It, it'll be Gunnersville. Gunnersville's my my favorite lake to fish. Yeah. I live on Chickamauga, but Gunnersville just Chickamauga's very tough anymore. Yeah. Mm. Rambling off a lot of bucket list lakes for me there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So what about uh what about your favorite lure to throw? Chatterbait. Chatterbait or jerkbait. Chatterbait. I'd say chatterbait. That's what I get to throw most of the time. So are you uh are you a strictly jackhammer or is there another one that like the original or the Project Z or something like that? I've thrown them all, and again, I'm not an expert at anything in my life, but uh, I've got the slobber knockers that just come out from Berkeley, and I like them. I'm on the Picasso team. Dan will get me, but but I, I like the shock blades. Uh, the carbon fiber are all okay, uh, but uh, it, it is the jackhammer. It's just different. It's different. You know, I believe where we live right now, they're kind of conditioned to it. You know, they did that with the umbrella rig for a while. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, you just, it, that's, yeah, it's jackhammer. That's it. That is the only chatterbait ever made, really. Everything else is a vibrator. <laughs> I hear you. And yeah, and yeah it's, it's funny you said that about being an expert. I question anybody who says that anybody is an expert at anything because yeah. that, that literally means you know everything there is to know about that subject. And nobody knows everything there is to know about anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have oh. become an expert of being proven wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll wind up the favorite questions with uh, time of year. What's your favorite time of year to fish? Uh, winter time. Winter time. I, I don't. I, I like it if it's raining, twenty five degrees. I don't, I don't. I love winter time fishing. It, 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 the bite is just different, whether it's a jerk bait. A jerk bait sometimes can kind of be slow, but what I've experienced is it's a dump truck bite. Same way with an umbrella rig. I mean, you know, luckily I live here on Chickamauga where they make hog farmer umbrella rigs, and he's a good friend of mine. And uh, he showed me, you know, you fish an umbrella rig like you do a crankbait. You fish it to get it caught in something. And, and we use light wire hooks so that they can straighten out if you get caught on a rock or a brush pile. Um, uh, I used 20 pound copolymer. I threw, literally caught over 100 fish on one one winter, never retied that copolymer knot. Hmm. Um, braid, you can hear it. You can hear it through that umbrella rig. He's done microphone studies and it's awful. Uh, they'll still bite it because they're angry. 
but you can hear the braid. So it, it's just super annoying. And, and so I use copolymer, but, but uh, wintertime, that bite is just, I, mean, I love it. That's cool. awesome, man. Well, we're going to start wrapping things up. If you would let us know, what do you have coming up for, for Steve Owens and for all the stuff that you've got, you've got going on. Yeah. Oh, well, kind of, you know, everybody's listening, be in prayer. I have some opportunities coming up and, um, all of them lead to, to me helping go full time and, and grow, uh, what we do at dugout bait and tackle, you know, Jamie Coza, uh, AJ McCorder introduced me to him, uh, several years ago. I was about done with kayaking, just, just disenfranchised, tired. And he said, man, let me, let me take you to a shop. You like stuff. You like fishing rods and reels. You like promoting. And so I met Jamie and his wife with my wife and we, we, and then that's it. The rest is history there. Um, but I want to continue to grow that. Uh, my son owns Precision Hardwood here in town. He works in Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. Uh, he's doing really, really well um, to the point where he can't really handle the day-to-day -day paper and grow. So that's something I'm good at. So hopefully I can transition to that and do some more kayak stuff. Uh, so that's on the personal level. And my wife's very supportive of it. Uh, so be in prayer for that. There's, there's two options there I have to choose pretty soon. Um, the other is, is um, you know, we got the Hobie College Tournament this coming weekend on Lake Gunnersville, And then after that, we have the Hobie Championship on Lake Hartwell in November. And then the middle of November, I run the Georgia Bass Nation State Championship on Lake Seminole. Uh, November is a phenomenal time to fish that lake. Um, it's going to be lights out. So that state, that'll be the, the first tournament series state championship. Our angler of the year was Joseph Gayton. Won $1,000 from Carl Black Chevrolet cash for, for angler of the year points. Um, and then after that, we start the 2023 season off in December of this year on Del Hollow for Tennessee Bass Nation. So uh, kind of a little bit of downtime, but not really. So uh, just a really, really, really good time. Absolutely, man. And I want to give you an open floor for shout outs. If you have sponsors or supporters, anybody you want to say thank you to, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. I, I won't take half an hour on this one, but I do. Uh, I want to thank you guys for, for having this podcast. Uh, we, we, um, you know, we need to support the things like this because it, you know, we all get disenfranchised with tournament fishing. That's all we talk about. That's all we talk about it. Um, there's, you know, it's a small portion of our sport. It really is. Um, but, you know, I, I just, on a personal level, you know, I want to thank my wife for, you know, she's always supportive. She communicates with me the way I need it uh, because I don't, I don't accept criticism right out of the gate. But, you know, if, you, if we have a thing, it's like, hey, we're going to have a husband wife talk. And then that's it. You hush and you listen and it works. Uh, I want to thank her, uh, my son. You know, he's very supportive of me and gives me the confidence to do what I want to do. You know, like I spoke about Ryan Lambert, he, he pushes me. Jamie Coza does the same. Um, you know, AJ McWhorter, uh, you know, Christine Fisher, you know, Jay Wallen, and, and all them. They're they're very supportive of me and give me the confidence. Daniel Davis is his right hand man and everything we do here. Um, you know, and and then. Uh, moving on from there, I mean, what's truly important? I mean, I, I want to thank the Lord for just uh, an unlimited amount of chances. That's just the best way. That's that's why no matter how many times you guys were to do something to me within reason, you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna make it through it because he, he he forgives me however many hundreds of thousands of times a week for what I do, and so I just I really want to be thankful for that and just ask that. You know, uh, I yield and, and let him be a bigger part of my life every day because it, it can always be a little bit better. Absolutely, man. And if uh, if listeners want to follow you uh, on social media, follow your adventures, all that good stuff, um, get in touch with you. How do they find you? Uh, I have a Facebook page. It's pretty active. My Instagram is, is kind of up and down some because I do – so much of our sponsor highlight stuff, but, uh, but Facebook, uh, my phone numbers all over everything. Um, and then the, obviously those tournament series is that we talked about. Um, so there's that, uh, we do have one other tournament, the end of September, our grassroots club, we have our classic. And what that is, is even if you're not a dues member, you can pay $20 extra to fish the event. And that goes into the payout, but we fish from Friday, 3 PM until Sunday, 3 PM. 
around the clock as much as you can fish, as little as you can fish. And it's still five fish for the whole weekend. So if you have family or church obligation, you still get to fish as much as you can fit in there. And it, it's a freaking good time. I mean, we, we have a blast. And, and so uh, that that's that's going to be on Lake Gunnersville this year. So reach out to us at Tennessee Valley Kayak Anglers if uh, you're in that area. So, uh, but uh, that's it. Well, Steve, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, this has been awesome when we overcame the technical difficulties and uh and it ended up being absolutely worth it that's right i appreciate that i i i I do carry on when i talk it just kind of just takes off and i I don't know how to stop it sometimes but we like it it. absolutely (laughs) all right man well uh again thank you so much uh and wish you all the best Hey, thank both of y'all. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Seeing your outdoors gives me confidence that no matter what happens, what I take on the water is coming back home with me. With retrieval devices for fishing rods, bow fishing bows, action cams, and even one that can be attached to your other gear, they've got your whole arsenal covered. When one of these devices goes in a drink, it releases a float attached to your gear by 60 feet of line so you can get it back, and the pressure sensitive filter means that you don't have to worry about rain or dips in the water while landing a fish. At SaveYourOutdoors.com, that's S-A-V-U-R Outdoors.com, you can use promo code FNFP15 to save 15% and try them for yourself. Whether you're a Ned Rig vet or a finesse fishing noob like me, Jade's Jigs is your source for high quality finesse jigs that raise the bar by being lead free. Using a tin bismuth alloy not only makes Jade's Jigs eco-friendly, it also makes the jig lighter so you get the same profile with less weight for the fish to feel. Check out jadesjigs.com, that's J-A-D-E-S-J-I-G-S dot com to see their full lineup of jigs, styles, and colors. And since you're a Faith and Fishing listener, you can save 10% on your order by using promo code FNF10 at checkout. Another huge thank you to Steve for coming on the show and sharing his story with us. Uh, I'll have all of his links in the show notes as well as the All Things Faith and Fishing link where you can see mine and Robert's links, uh, sponsor links, merch store, all of that good stuff. Robert, man, what an episode. Yeah, man, that, that was uh, that was pretty cool. I, I had a feeling it was going to be a good one and, and we weren't disappointed at all. And uh, I mean, just just several things, and and I'll kind of wrap up. Um, me and you both fish out of kayaks, and and we both experienced uh, the fellowship that that goes along with that. And uh, I just sometimes I think it's important to remember that in our in our everyday lives, and and at these tournaments, and uh, you know, people are always watching, and you never know who you're impacting, and and you never know you know, who you're bringing closer to Christ. And, uh, you know, his story, uh, there were several examples of that. And that just made me, you know, think about, you know, hopefully my actions. And, and uh, that's a one way that we always uh, close prayer at dinner time in our house is, is try to let our actions and our words bring other people closer to Christ. And, uh, you know, that's just a great example of that. So uh, got reminded of that a few times during his story. Absolutely, man. Well, it is uh, it is getting getting late here where we are. Um, so we're going to go ahead and call it. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless. Thank you for listening to the Faith and Fishing podcast. Faith in Fishing is produced and hosted by me, Cam Steele, and is sponsored by Jade's Jigs, Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle, Save Your Outdoors, Atolas, and Mr. B Lure Company. Be sure to give us a rating and a review and to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless.